Welcome back everyone to the latest weather forecast here at Weather Watcher Studios. Let's start this update with a look at the tropics. June 1st marked the official start of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season, but thankfully things are still pretty quiet out there. Now over in the eastern Pacific, we have one system active. This is Tropical Storm Cosme, which is not going to survive much longer as it enters hostile waters south of Mexico. But we also have two other areas of interest that need to be watched for gradual development over the next several days. Thankfully, those tropical cyclones won't have a direct effect on nearby land, but a strong Bermuda high over the Atlantic Ocean is going to keep all of this rich tropical moisture flowing westward throughout the Caribbean, so I'm still going to be watching for an increased risk of flash flooding from northern South America and throughout many Central American countries, not only in the near term, but probably for the remainder of this month. Take a look at the global tropical weather hazards graphic from the Climate Prediction Center. For June 18th through the 25th, above average precipitation is facing favored from Venezuela to Colombia all the way to central Mexico. Those red shades over the eastern Pacific indicate a high probability of tropical cyclone formation, and this continues even into the June 25th through July 1st time frame. I'll be incorporating tropical updates like this and as many of my forecasts as possible throughout hurricane season, so if you are new to the channel and you live in a hurricane-prone area, definitely consider subscribing. Now moving on to the other side of the Atlantic, a very large and slow moving low pressure system is approaching Europe and as it gets closer to this smaller disturbance in the vicinity of Portugal and Spain, it's going to pull it up into Ireland and the UK with warm and dusty air. This will result in a very noticeable increase in temperature in the western half of Europe, followed by a risk of thunderstorms for some places. Let's take a closer look at that starting today. Main risk of strong to severe storms should exist across Spain and even into southwestern France, and then from Wednesday night into Thursday we could see some storms reaching Ireland and the UK. On Thursday afternoon and evening we see storms focusing over France, but look at what happens going into Friday. That big Atlantic disturbance is going to be getting closer and closer, which really aggravates the situation from eastern Spain and up through France with explosive thunderstorms developing and then moving north, affecting the UK during the evening and overnight hours. This leads right into a stormy Saturday across a similar area of mainland Europe. So as conditions do start to improve for the UK and Ireland, watch out for strong to severe storms developing in eastern Spain, France, and western Germany. Lastly, storms will finally make a noticeable advancement towards the east, at least in Central Europe, but that won't really be the case down around Spain, where storms will likely develop once again. This interesting weather setup is actually due to something called an omega block, which is characterized by an area of high pressure flanked by two areas of low pressure, creating the shape of the Greek letter omega. This is why the middle of Europe stays dry for most of the week while areas off to the east and west experience persistent storminess. And for those wondering about the other low pressure system, this is going to be very similar to the one approaching from the Atlantic in the sense that it will be very slow moving. This will bring repeated rounds of rain and storm activity for the rest of this week and even into the beginning of next week for a large part of Russia into portions of Ukraine, Belarus, the Balkan Peninsula, the Caucasus region, and Turkey. By the end of the week, this omega block pattern is going to be collapsing. This is why rain and storm activity will be able to push deeper into Central Europe as that area of low pressure over Russia also breaks up and moves east. Looking ahead to what comes after the collapse of this omega block, we see high pressure building up into northwestern Europe behind the decaying low. So while some storm activity does advance south and east, nothing really happens except for a couple new disturbances pushing into the Norwegian Sea, and it might not be until June 20th and beyond that we see another cutoff low try to interact with the Iberian Peninsula. I'll be keeping an eye on the latest trends going forward. As always, thank you for tuning into this video and be sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel. But before we do conclude the video entirely, we have several featured photos and videos to look at today, so please enjoy the featured media made possible by viewers of this channel. <laughs> 